book of Joshua. Book of Joshua, chapter 3. Amen. I'm not going to read all this. It's a lot. It's uh, 17 verses. Hallelujah. But I'm going to hit some and miss some. Joshua, chapter 3. This is dropped in my spirit today. Fresh in my spirit. And I thank God for this. It spoke to my heart. And I pray that it speak to yours. Joshua chapter 3. Let's read verses 1 down to 5. And then verses 13 down to 16. Uh, actually 17. 1 down to 5, 13 down to 17. I break it up like that because we're going to come back through these verses. Yes, the Bible says, and Joshua rose late in the afternoon. Now he had to get his sleep out. No, he, he had to have his sleep. <laughs> Joshua rose early in the morning. And they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel enlarged there before they passed over. Amen. They're coming from one place to go to another one. Amen. They for to go over to Jordan. Amen. And it, it, and it came to pass after three days that the, that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest, the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Tell somebody go after it. Mm. And there shall be a space between you and it. What? What is it? The Ark of the Covenant. About 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. Tell somebody, you have not passed this way. Uh, it's a way we for the past we've never been before. Test my, we for the go, you for the go away, you never been before. Say, you have not passed this way here the two. Here to four. You, you haven't passed this way. You ain't never been this way before. Uh-huh. And say, Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourself. For tomorrow, the Lord would do wonders among you. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Verse 6 said, And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. Verse 13, And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, uh, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. That the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall stand upon a heap. Now the water's going to stand up. The flooded waters is going to be, it's gonna be, become standing water. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass. Oh, I got a word out of that. Move from their tents. To pass over to Jordan. And the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan. And the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of harvest. In other words, this water was, it was flooded. The currents were strong. Amen. They had to cross over Jordan. The waters was there. But the Bible says as soon as they stuck their little tip and toe, they took, they dipped their little feet just a little bit at the brim of the water. The Bible said, verse 16, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeritan. 
And though they came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priest that brother the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. In the midst of Jordan. Y'all hear this? Where the water was. They're standing where the water was. Did y'all read that? God made the, drown, the ground dry for them to pass over. Until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Right, I'm gonna build my thought from actually I'm just gonna build it from verse four and five. Read it again. It said there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And I heard the Lord speak a word to me. He said to me, I want to tell you, prepare yourself for what God is about to do. <laughs> prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. I heard him. Get ready. Prepare yourself for what God is about to do. Brothers and sisters, Joshua is Moses' successor. In other words, Joshua took over after Moses died. And just like Moses, he presides over the miraculous parting of a body of water so that the Israelites can cross on dry ground. Remember, he, they walked over the dry sea. They dropped over the Red Sea and God made it dry for them to walk over to get to the wilderness. Now God is using Joshua to walk through the Jordan River to get them over to the promise. And one thing about every leader, one thing about every predecessor, is a predecessor will do more than his leader that was previously before him. He's going to do something that they never done. Y'all quiet. Joshua done something like Moses, but it was different from Moses. Uh, hear me. And so at this time, the waters are, are not those of the Red Sea, but of the Jordan River. The Red Sea marked, listen, the Red Sea, which Moses helped them, helped them to cross over, it, it, it marked the beginning of Israel's journey in the wilderness of Sinai. The Jordan River marks the last boundary between the wilderness where the Israelites have been weathering for 40 years. In other words, you exited Pharaoh's house and went to the wilderness. Now you're going to exit the wilderness and go to total freedom. God don't want us to be stagnated in one place. Y'all, <laughs> that's good you got out of Pharaoh's house. It's good that you left, amen, you part of the Red Sea. I mean, you uh, walked across the dry ground on Red Sea. It's good that you walked through the wilderness, but God said, now I got to get you to freedom. Y'all quiet. I don't want you wandering around the wilderness as free people. I don't want free people wandering. Y'all quiet. Uh, I don't want you wandering as if though you don't have a home. I don't want you wandering as if though you don't have a God. Y'all quiet. I don't want I want to do more than just deliver you. I want to free you. Oh, God have mercy. Are oh, y'all understanding now? As such, crossing the Jordan River is is a oh y'all understanding me? Crossing the Jordan River is a memorious occasion. The beginning of the fulfillment of of God's promises to Israel. The Lord said a lot of us, we have not yet church, church, we have not yet entered to the full promise yet. He brought us from one place, brought us here, but God said, I got to get you from here to over there. 
that y'all quiet. There's, there's something more than what you see. Y'all quiet. <laughs> yes, Lord, I, I, I got something more for you. I want to give you some freedom. I want to give you some space. Y'all quiet. I don't want you just running around a small place. I want to give you something bigger. I want to give you some land. I don't want you to have just one. I don't want you to uh, um, just use some man's land. I want to give you your own land. I want to give you space. If you want to set a tent up in your, sp your space, you can. You don't have to rent it. It's yours. Come on, somebody. I want to give you the daycare. I want to give you the kitchen in your church. I, I want to give you the... Now, say, listen. He said, I'm going to get you from one place over to the next. We're about to transition from one place over to the next. Y'all better hear me. He said, I'm about to bring you out of the wilderness and I'm going to allow you to cross over this Jordan to get to your next place. Do y'all believe this here? I don't think some of y'all believe it. Crossing the Jordan River was a key event in Israel's history. Just as crossing the Red Sea changed Israel's standing from slavery to freedom, passing through the Jordan into the Promised Land transformed Israel from a wandering people, watch this, into an established nation. Because you know in the wilderness they went from place to place. But God said, I want to, well, I hear you Lord, not only as a body, but I want to establish some of y'all in your mind. Because you are not, you, you, you're just unstable. You just wander from mood to mood, from opinion to opinion. You don't know what you want to do here, whether you want to do, well God said, listen. He said, I'm going to get you across to a place where you're not no more wandering, but I'm going to make you established in your faith. I'm going to establish you where you're not moved by every wind of doctrine. You're not moved by every opinion and, and every feeling. Come on, somebody. He said, now I'm going to move you over. I'm going to get you over the promise. I'm going to get you over to the next level. He said, Moses was good, but Moses is dead now. I got something for you to do, Joshua. You can't mourn over Moses no more. The people that was with Moses already died. He said, you got a new generation that's coming with you. I hear the Lord saying, if we're going to go over as a church, he said that the old season got to die in you. We can't take nobody over with us that still got the old season in them. We got to have a fresh mindset that we are going to higher heights and deeper depths. We're not wondering where everybody is coming over together. Y'all quiet here now. It can't go. We got to die to the old feelings, the old emotions, the old flesh, the old mindset, the old lack, the old... Listen, he said, listen, you got to die. Those that was with Moses died. He said, I got some new people with Joshua. Oh, y'all better hear me. And these people with Joshua is about to see God's glory like those that was with Moses saw the glory with him. Oh, y'all listen to me. Y'all better hear me. Chabo uh, Shande, God hear the Lord send to me. He said to me in the spirit. He said, I'm shifting you, Pastor, from Moses to Joshua. He said, What they saw in the old season, they're not going to see in this one. <laughs> Y'all better hear me. Just like I was with you in the old season, I'm going to be with you in the new season. And the people that's with you is going to see that not only am I with you through your anointing, but they're going to see that I'm with you through the manifestation of my power and demonstration of my miracles in their lives. Y'all better hear me. I'm going to show them that I'm with you. Not just through anointing, but I'm going to show them that I'm with you when people give you buildings, when people give you land, when folks give you this and give you that. They're going to see that, wait a minute, I know God is not with them through preaching, but God is with them through financial and physical and material manifestation. Could I get somebody to believe God tonight to lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. So God said tonight, he said, I want to get y'all in some places where I can establish you. I want to I want to put you in a place where your heart is fixed with where you are. Your heart is fixed with your pastor. 
Your heart is fixed with your church. Y'all quiet. See, these folks' hearts have to be fixed with Joshua to be to be able to go over with Joshua. They, they, they weren't listen, they weren't in a place to question his authority. They weren't in a place to question his leadership. Y'all quiet here now. They had to be able to believe the prophet. And so God said, listen. He said, listen, I want to I wanna take you over to a place where I can establish you as a nation. And, and so to the people, to the people, the river seemed like an insurmountable obstacle. Crossing this river seemed insurmountable. It seems to be. Look at the flood. It's the, it was the flooded season. It was the season where Jordan River was flooded. The currents were strong. Y'all. And how are we going to cross over this? They, they looked around and how are we going to do it? But see, they questioned it, but the man of God already saw it. See, you got to learn how to just rest your mind and just thank God for where you are. Because after a while, God going to use the leader and give him the vision. And all you got to do is obey and follow. Come on, somebody here. And, and see, when you, when you I learn, I thank you, Jesus. God said the leader's got to have a big vision. It's got to be so big where the saints, it's hard, they, it's hard for them to wrap their minds around. How you going to do that? That's how big it's going to be. It's got to look insurmountable to them. It's got to look impossible. Joshua, we go over to the promise of Jericho, but look at the waters in front of us. Look at the finances. We don't have the finances. We don't have all the people with us. You know, you're looking around. Look at the little building we have. Look at the small people. How are we going to get that? How are we going to go over that? Y'all quiet here. How? Yeah. <laughs> I learned something. Money means a lot to man, but nothing to God. <laughs> God the money is all right. But we got to look beyond money and look at God. Uh, we got to go beyond money and trust God. And so he's saying in the word here, they, they looked at this river. They looked at how bad it was. And in our minds, they was wondering, how are we going to cross over this Jordan? It's humanly impossible. The Lord said in this hour, saints, I want to do some things in your life that is humanly impossible for you. Humanly impossible for my human finances. Humanly impossible for my level of education. <laughs> Humanly impossible for my age. He said, I want to do some things for you that, that you can't get the glory after I do it. Well, you're going to have to testify and say, it was not by might. It was not by power. But all this you see was by his spirit. Y'all... I believe this tonight. The waters was an obstacle, minister. But but to God, it represented a decisive turning point. Do y'all still believe in a God of turning points? It's a God of a turning point. Y'all don't believe this tonight. I, I other day I was a few weeks ago. I said, God, I think I have to go back to work. You know what the Lord told me? I heard it like I'm talking to you. He said, You work for me. I heard him tell me. I, I said, But God, I got this, I got that. God said, You work for me, Joshua. He said, you work for me? I need you in front of me for you to go to work. Y'all hear me now? See, because if, if, if I work for him, 
then turning points will happen for you and me and us. I'm getting there. Y'all bear with me. And so God is saying, look, to the people. He said, yes, the waters is bad. Yes, the waters is flooded. Yes, you might be sick in your body. Yes, you might be going through financial issues. Yes, all hell is breaking loose. But God said to you, it might seem insurmountable. Too much pressure going on. But God said, I'm a God that specializes in areas that you cannot handle. Because if you can do it, that means God don't have to step in it. What make him God is, he do for you what you can't do for yourself. If I have the money in the bank, why call on God to pay the bill? I can just go to the bank and withdraw the money and pay the light bill. But God says, I want to be your God. I want to prove to you that I'm real, not just through reading your Bible. But I want the Bible to come off the page. I, I want the word that you read to manifest in your reality. Lord have mercy. He said, I want, it was one scripture Jesus said, I want to manifest myself to you. He want to bring out who he is. He want to show you that I'm God and I'm the only one that can do this. And I heard this in my spirit. The Lord said to me, you would know you would know the last time you had a mighty move of God. You'll know it. Why? Because your mind will be baffled. When the last time your mind was baffled? When you just can't figure out, how did you do this? If we have not experienced that in a while, it's because somewhere we're not believing God. Y'all got quiet here. You just had no idea that money was coming through the mail. Had no idea that for the soul that in your hand. You had no idea the light company told you, 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 you excuse this money. The car company told you not to pay this money. You, you good. I mean, that's, it's just things that when folks, you, when, your, when, you, when, when your barber give you some grands. Y'all got to quiet. When somebody give you a BMW, when somebody give you a house without ID, it happened to us before. No ID, just sign the papers. <laughs> the Lord said, I want to work those miracles out for you often. But, but, but God said, listen, what's hindering us it's we, 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 we start reasoning when we see the obstacle. We reason, I need money. My credit. I don't have this. And God said, I can't send you across this Jordan while you're trying to reason with the water. The water ain't going to talk. The water is going to just oppose you. <laughs> Y'all hear me? These things that we don't have, don't talk. They just oppose. Am I right? <laughs> Y'all, this right here, bless me today. It, it, it just opposes us. And so the water, so it's letting this seem insurmountable. It seemed insurmountable, Minister Geisha. It seemed insurmountable, Brother Phil. It seemed insurmountable, Minister Casey. So Jordan River, so Jordan River, Jordan River was standing between the children of Israel as a barrier to the promise that God gave to Israel. Can I ask you something? Is there something in your way today? Can you think of barriers that's right in front of you and you got to overcome this to get there? God said, well, that's where I work at. He said, I work in the barriers. I, I specialize in, in removing stuff out your way. Uh, only my hand can move it out the way. And so, brothers and sisters, the turbulent waters of the Jordan River stood as a threatening barrier before the Israelites on it 
on the march. A great obstacle between promise and fulfillment. All the people of Israel saw, all they saw was a rushing river. Swollen with spring rains laying in front of them. The promise that they would cross over to Jordan would not happen without Joshua and Israel's participation. All right. It wasn't going to happen without their participation. I don't believe y'all believe that. God ain't finna do this stuff without participation. Because the manifestation of God's promises is hinged on us operating in divine order. Divine order. And so we're talking about preparing yourself for what God is about to do. So the first step in preparing yourself for what God's about to do is follow the instructions of leadership. Look at verse 3 and 4. If we're going to go somewhere as a church, we got to get into divine order. Everybody got to get in divine order. Look at verse 3 and 4 if you will. Yeah, all right. He said, and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest, the Levite, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. And there shall be a space between you and it and about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that you may know the way by which you must go for you have not passed this way the dirt. You have not passed this way to, to four. And, and so brothers and sisters, they, they were to, we know they were to carry the ark who was in Bible class when we studied the ark of the covenant. It was to carry the ark with poles and not touch it. The ark symbolized God's presence. And so he said in the word here, he said when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord God and the priests, the Levites bearing it then you shall remove from your place and go after it. So what God is saying is, when you as members see the presence of God, because the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. It represents the power of God. If you are under leadership, they have the power of God upon it. You got to move when you see it upon your leaders. You, you can't just sit down and come to church like a bump on a log and expect to go over. He said, if there is an anointing, if there's a man or woman of God carrying God's anointing, he said, you got to be able to know how to move with that anointing. Y'all got quiet here. We talk about divine order. You got to be able to move with divine order. You got to be able to move with the anointing, with the presence of God that's on that leader. Listen, your breakthrough is tied up to the presence of God that's on your leader. Notice God could have just moved the waters, but God gave them some instructions. He said, I, listen, don't you make a move to the presence of God that's on the leader. Y'all got quiet. God is saying you can't get to that promise until you learn how to follow a man of God that got my presence upon him. Lord have mercy. That's carrying my presence the right way. That's doing things the right way. Notice that if they do it the right way, he said follow them. And so many people is not taking advantage of following a man or woman of God that's carrying God the right way. Lord is quiet here now. Lord have mercy. They don't, they don't, don't understand the benefit Amen. The blessing in following a man of God or a woman of God that got God's presence upon them. He said to them, listen, before you go to the Jordan River, you got to follow the priest. Because the priest got something on their shoulders that's going to lead you to the promise. You're not following a man, but you're following what he's carrying. Y'all quiet here now. <laughs> he said, when you see them with the ark of the carrying the ark of the covenant, then you move out of your place. You're not moving for flesh, but you're moving because of the presence of God. Because watch this, God's presence don't go nowhere purposeless. 
his power his anointing is not going in the world purposeless when god has put his anointing on a man of god god's gonna move him listen i'm not preaching her for you purposeless this ministry is not here for a purposeless reason we are here for a reason and there's a purpose while we're here and there's a purpose for the future and so i gotta get in place to carry his presence to where he want me to go and you gotta follow if you see me packing up you follow me i can't hear nobody if y'all can you don't question where we're going. I can't question where I'm going. I'm just obeying what he said to do with his presence. I got to obey and do what he said with his anointing. That is what you call divine order. That's the first thing. You got to be in divine order. You got to be able to sense that's the glory on that man. It, listen, listen. The presence on a preacher do not, uh, you, you, you cannot determine that by the size of his building. Of how big it is or how small it is. Because there's some preachers got a big building, ain't got no anointing at all. It's quite they got they got education, they got good business skills, but they have no presence. They can't lead no the people no farther than the building they in. Y'all got quiet. You can't lead them no farther than your sanctuary. You can't lead them no farther than your gymnastics uh, uh, workout place in your in your church. Come on. But when you got somebody with an anointing, no matter how big his church is or how small it is, if God God's presence is upon him. Watch this. Watch this. He said, follow the priest. Follow the priest. When you see them carry the ark, then you follow them. God would never tell a man to move without his presence. God have mercy. God would never tell a man to move from where he's at without his presence being up on him first. God's presence got to be upon him. He got to carry. Lord have mercy. Notice he said they had to carry the ark. They got to carry it, not hold it. Carry it. You, you got to see a man of God got to have some on his shoulders. He got to have an anointing. Hallelujah. He got to have a vision. He got to have an ear to hear what God is saying. Go. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying today. And, and I believe it's the reason why there's so much discouragement because uh, the, the man of God is not hearing what God is saying. Oh, but I heard this today. God said, get before me. He said, once my presence get on you, I'm going to show you where to go. And when you start moving, you're going to see who's really with you after a while. Because everybody ain't going to move with you. Come on. Did some of them ain't moving with you right now. <laughs> they with you, but they're not really moving with you right now. But God said, after a while, I'm going to listen. He said, a word about them because those are the ones going to die with Moses. So I'm going to send some folks. Lord God, quiet. Hidden. He said the folks that they won't move right now They's really in Moses season When Moses have died They died in their own season Still trying to hang with us in the new one I can't hear nobody Santa Glory. He said when you, when you start moving forward In my presence I, I'm going to show you who's really moving with you In this new season Because I hear the Lord saying actually He said the new season started right now And, and you don't see anybody move You see some of them moving with you Some of them really got your back Some of them ain't really Everybody ain't playing with God. Everybody ain't bowing the bell. Everybody ain't trying to recover from a breakdown. And some folks really sold out, sanctified, and ready to move on. Y'all cry here now. And she really, let me tell you, the new season of Israel did not start when they crossed the, red, uh, crossed the Jordan. The new season started when they obeyed the priest. The moment, y'all cry the moment he said you take the ark on your shoulders I need you to get to the ark of the covenant your God and I need you and when I need you to win and after you bear it and he told the people I need you to remove remove from your place and go after it remove from your place and go after it remove from your place and go after it he spoke to them as a whole at the same time he's speaking to them individually god said you got to get out your shell get out that comfort zone let's get up and let's go come on let's get up and let's go over let's cross this jordan how many gonna cross it how many gonna cross it my God, we can't stuck in an old season. We can't stay stuck in an old season. We can't in an old season could be an old mindset. This old, this just stuck on lack, stuck on this. All of this I can do. Stuck on I don't know, I don't know what else to do. This all I can now listen. That's something else I can do because I got God in me. Oh God, I got the answer inside of me right now. I'm not answerless. I got the answer right now. I'm breathing with the answer. I'm 
eating with the answer. I'm talking with the answer. I'm praying with the answer. My food is digesting with the answer. I can't get. I'm drinking with the answer. Y'all, I got the answer inside. Hallelujah. That's God. Look at somebody and tell them God got the answer, baby. I tell them prepare yourself for what God is about to do. This particular time, I don't know how long God is saying, but I can't just keep focusing on hard heads. I, I, I just can't. I, I, we we got to go somewhere. Y'all quiet. I can't. Yeah, it's a time. Yeah, I got to deal with stuff. But God said, this is a time. Man, I need you to get some, get the, get the strong. I want you to exercise the strength of the strong. Because you're going to need them to help you go over. Come on. Exercise the strength. Get them ready. Get them ready. Let them know we're about to cross over from here. My God. God, I can't get no help in here. Get those that's really past. I'm with you. I mean, I'm really with you. I ain't just with you when I feel good. I'm with you at all times. Come on. I ain't going to betray you. I'm not going to act funny with you. Let me tell you, some saints have never acted funny. You know why? Because they're ready to go on over with you. I come on, shut up. Those are the saints that's ready to line up with divine order. He said when the priest He said when you see the ark He's talking to the people He said when you see the ark of the covenant Which contained the ten commandments Of the Lord your God The priest, the Levites Bearing it See, see, the preacher got to bear something That you ain't allowed to bear There's a part of God That he give us that he don't give to you Oh God That was that's why you got to follow. Because what I have, you don't have. What the pastor have, everybody don't have. And what the ministers have, everybody don't have. So there's, a, there's, a, there's something on my shoulder. Which is his presence. Which guarantee me. Success. And if I move with the presence of God and you move with me, it guarantee all of them. Y'all see that's why I gotta go on, but that's why I don't feel out of place because you're not in a position. We in this together. If everybody was an eye, who would be theirs? Y'all quiet. I ain't doing nothing in the church. Oh, you remember? Right, I thought we were together. What was my eye fight my ears? I never see her here. My nose fight my fight my hands. We gotta get out this petty stuff. We gotta go somewhere. We get all this stuff worked out later. But but can we work together as a When the last time you fasted for the church? In secret. We want to, folks want a, a position openly, but can't fast in secret for the church. You want a position openly in the church, but you can't fast secretly for the church. Listen, your work sometimes come on the back scene. There's people in this church, I know they do stuff. They don't tell nobody nothing. They do it and go about their business. They ain't looking for nothing. They ain't looking up for no position. They just pastor, it's done, here it is, and they want no recognition. Why can't we all be like that? I ain't giving me nothing to do. You have something to do. What you have to do is follow me. That's bearing this yoke and anointed for you to get over. Y'all got quiet here. See, people ain't prepared for what God's about to do because they're too petty. And watch this. This is dropped in my spirit. God said, I'm going to carry, I'm going to allow to go over with you whom I allow to go. Because I feel the need of cutting some off that shouldn't go, I just have to cut them off. Because what I got to do, he said, the purpose I have is too, is too important for pettiness. He said, where you going, it's too, it's too important for half-hearted folk. He said, this is my mission. Y'all better hear me. Y'all don't have to like what I'm saying. I don't really care. I'm trying to get us ready to go over somewhere, but we can't go with this petty spirit. We can't go over with these uh, jealousy and envies and strife. 
Double mind this God said listen those folks He said when, when I really started leading you over He said they ain't ready I'm going to leave them behind Y'all got quiet Oh God have mercy He said when you get the new building you're going to see who's ready there for you My God you're going to see who's ready there Because when you look around if they're not there I cut them off said the Lord He said because listen Because what I, what I have for you Is greater than how they feel about you What I have for you Is greater about what they feel about this church Y'all hey, got quiet he said, I want some people that feel good about me, not about the church, not about a position. Now that y'all got quiet, feel good about who I am. Divine order. Divine order is following leadership. Right now, God might be saying, I can't put anybody in a position. It might hold you back from getting where you got to go. He said, you're already battling yourself now from getting there. Why put folks in position and make it worse? You do that later. You do that when you cross over. Because you'll know what's right there with you. Y'all got quiet in. Right now, we got we got this water in front of us. We, we got some obstacles trying to get us from. God said, I'm putting a that anointing on this shoulder of my servant. And now when you see that anointing on him and you see him moving over, you follow him. Notice what it didn't say. It didn't say question him. It said move from your place. It didn't say question it. It didn't say guess about it. It didn't say pull him to the side and ask him what you're doing. He just said move with him. Y'all better hear me now. up and go he said yet there shall be a oh God look at verse 4 now this is talking about the ark of the covenant yet there shall be a space between you and it and about 2,000 cubits by measure are oh, y'all listening to me back there in the back you know what he's saying have respect for this ark keep your space between it you know what God is saying a lot of folks it's not fearing my presence enough. They're not fearing my presence. They they violating divine order. Divine order said keep your distance. Divine order said there's some space between my glory and you. Sometimes we can step out of bounds and step in the areas in God's glory that we shouldn't even be in. You might want to step in a position that you shouldn't be getting close to right now. Y'all got quiet. Put some, he said, if we're going to go over there, you got to put the people in right position and put them in the right place when it comes to my glory. Because some folks can't get that close to the pastor while they're going over there. Put some space between the present. Knows he's carrying it. So if he's carrying it, not only are you putting space between you and the ark, but you're putting some space between you and the priest. Everybody can't be that close to the first lady as we go over Jordan. Everybody can't have a microphone position while we get ready to go. You said put some space between you and it. Y'all quiet. Because when you have things out of divine order, it's going to hinder you from going over. Y'all quiet here now. A divine order. You got to know. You got to know how close to get to the leader. You got to know when to call him. And why you call him. Is everybody in a position to be checking on me? You're not that close to me. Put you some space between you and me. Because you ain't, you ain't delivered enough to be calling me. Y'all got quiet there. You ain't delivered enough to be checking on me like that. You ain't sanctified enough. Come on. That's got to be a space. You, your hands dirty, baby. We got to prepare ourselves to what God's about to do. And so what we got to do is get strict with the divine order. Let's put some distance. Now I ain't saying don't be close to me, but I'm saying put some distance between you. And you got to be, uh, listen, uh, 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 you crossed me already. I seen what you've done before. Uh, listen, I learned through divine order to pace myself. Because why? Why? Because I'm carrying his presence. I can't allow his presence to get too close to something that's dirty. 
I'm bearing his presence, getting that close to you. I'm carrying him. Oh, God. I'm violating his space. That there should be a space between you and that. Even the preacher got to be careful how close and what he come to God with. The people got to be careful how close they get to the preacher that's burning the presence. Y'all have to like me, but I'm this Bible. If I err it, you show me where I'm erring at. Y'all got quiet here. Let me tell you. When you are anointed, there's a space that you got to have between people. If you, if God have given you a responsibility to burn his gospel and to carry his anointed, you got to put space between folks that's not delivered. If you don't, you're violating divine order. I know it's right. Because when you do that, you know, us are died. For getting violating the presence of God. Let me tell you what happens. When you let people too close to that present, you kill relationship. You you kill y'all got quiet. Cause let me tell you why you killed that relationship? Because you let them get too close. Y'all understand. This. You allowed them to get too close to what you burn. They were never supposed to get that close to what you burn. To God said, because they touched it. Illegally, they touch your anointing illegally. I'm about to cut it. I'm about to cut the relationship. I'm about to cut that closeness. Y'all got quiet. For the purpose of you burning this as a leader by yourself. Everybody ain't designed to carry this with you. Everybody's not designed to fast with you. Y'all got y'all like that. Everybody ain't designed to go on a fast with the pastor. Everybody ain't designed to go on a fast with the ministers. When you do that, you're bringing people too close. We, we, we got to get ready to go over. And I'm talking about preparation. This is preparation. Can I get a witness up in here? He said, listen, put a, he said, I need you to put some distance between you and it. You and the ark. Right? And he told him about 2,000 cubit by measure. You know, God really have a measurement of how close you should get to the pastor. Right, like that. There's a measurement. If I exceed that measurement, I'm out of order. Y'all don't See, we see that measurement when you get coming. You see the measurement when you get familiar. Let me tell you, you know, I'm going to give you one good example of how you got familiar with your leader when you get upset when they say no. We ain't ready to go over like that. You get upset when they say you can't be in charge of that. You know what you do with that when you do that? You're questioning what he's bearing. <laughs> Y'all got quiet. You, you, you're questioning what he's bearing. And if the church is like that, we ain't ready to go over. Too many babies. Can I get somebody back? He said, listen, I, I want you to about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it. Come not near unto it. Notice he didn't say don't come by it. But it's don't come near it. Because you're going to have to have it to get there. Right? Why, why Joshua? That you may know the way by which we must go. See, you get too close to the leader. You lose focus of where we're going. Y'all got quiet. Did y'all just hear what I just said? That you, that, that you may know the way by which you must go. You violate that space. You lose. You lose. You don't have the, the comprehension no more. 
about where we're going. Because she got too close. Y'all have y'all don't like me. It's supposed got too close. He's saying too close to that what you're carrying. To the point where they lost focus of where we're going. That's why he was able to get moody and get attitude. And they don't know what they want to do. No matter what, they don't know whether they want to cross Jordan with us or stay in the wilderness. Y'all got quiet, y'all. He said, by which you must go, for you have not passed this way here before. We for to go somewhere we've never been before. So we got to set this order. Ministers, there's a place you have to be in that everybody can't go. It's a place being first lady got to be in that everybody can't go. That's a closeness that you can't come in. I can't let you in. Listen, listen. I get, I'll talk to you, but certain places you can't go that I go. I can't let you in certain places. I can't hear nobody. There's certain things I can't share with you. And let me tell y'all something. And there's certain, how do I word this? Mm. And there's certain answers I don't have to give you. Because some folks got it bad with I say something they don't like. You come in and question, well, what does that? I don't have to give you no answer. I don't have to let you get that close to me and tell you why I get why I say what I said. Come on, somebody here. I don't have to give you no answer. Y'all don't like me here, cousins. I gotta rough you up to see where you at. I can't take your weak your weak attitude over there. You got folks got it bad, boy. They come and call and ask what. So I don't understand. You know what you just did? You questioned. Instead of saying, you know what, Lord? He's right. Y'all. It comes through a questioning. And God is saying, I'm trying to, listen. You know what God trying to tell them, them people like that? I'm trying to prepare you to get over. We got to go over. I'm trying to prepare you for what I'm about to do. I need you to make your mind up whether you're going to be there or not. Make your mind up whether you're going to follow that anointing or not. Make your mind up whether you're going all the way over or not. I don't know who you are. I don't know who are y'all. Are y'all ready to go over? What? Come on, somebody. Well, you got to take a lick and it keep ticking. You got to take encouragement and you got to take a rebuke. You got to take a uplifting and you got to take a correction. Come on, you got to take all of it. Come on, somebody. If I tell you something, say, hey, listen, God tell me to tell you something, don't question me. Listen, it is what it is. Y'all got to, you can't question me, no man will answer you. But listen. I'm trying to get us ready. And so you got to follow the one that's burning the ark. Because if you get too close to that, you're going to miss it. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to lose your focus to where we're going. Okay, come on, give God some praise in there. Yeah. So that, I, mean, I can go on with that for hours. But we got to ask ourselves personally, am I under divine order? Is my life operating with God? Am, am I flowing with God? Is my life in order with God? Am, is, is, is it like the water, the rivers of living water flowing out of me? Is there anything hindering that water? Is there anything hindering my walk with God? Or am I in right step with him? Do, do you feel, as a saint, your, your walk with God should feel like a flow? You should feel like you're in a, you're in a place where you when you're flowing with God, where there's no hindrance, there's, there's nothing challenging you to make you question whether I'm right or not. No, you, that should be a place with God where you're not questioning whether you're right with God. You know you're right with God. Come on. You know you're in order with God. That's no, I ain't saying you got it all together. I ain't saying you're perfect. I ain't saying you got angel wings. But I'm talking about your heart is right with God and you live in holy. Come on. And you know that, that without a shadow of a doubt, you are in right standing with God. That's divine order. See, a lot of folks, I'm going to tell you now, we're talking about leadership. I'm going to get to the next one. But a lot of folks is saying they're in right position with God, but they're not in right position with leadership. Quiet. They have to be in right relationship with the one that's burning the ark. Y'all got quiet here now. Y'all, come on now. That's got to be a right relationship. 
with the one that's carrying the ark. Let me go on because time is flying. Watch this. Mm. The second step. Y'all understood the first step about getting, about getting ready, preparing yourself for what God's about to do? Get in divine order. Follow the one that's burning the ark. When, he's, when you see the presence moving, you get up and move. Second thing you got to do. Y'all writing it down? Second step in preparing yourself for what God's about to do is sanctify yourself. Uh-oh. Ah, you want God to do this, and I want God to do that. I'm believing God for the blessing, but you ain't sanctified. Come on, come on, All right, got quiet on me. Look at verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Notice before he said he'll do wonders, the first thing he said is sanctify yourself. All right. The book of Joshua emphasizes the ideal of holiness. The basic meaning of holiness is separation from things that are unclean or uncommon. God said, before I bless you, you got to come out of sin. You got to come out of filth. You got to come out of stuff that's just defiling you. God said, I can't bless you. I can't send you over to the promise. And your spirit is still defiled. You still tainted. Come on, somebody. You're still shacking up. You're still committing adultery. You're still committing fornication. You're still watching things that you shouldn't be watching. You're playing with thoughts you shouldn't be playing with. Come on. He said, listen, before I can help you move over, he said, I need you to sanctify yourself. He said, I need new beginning to sanctify itself. Oh, y'all, I need everybody. To, the Lord said, I need everybody to get with one accord. Because what I'm about to do, I can't do it if everybody ain't together. He said, everybody got to get into a place of sanctifying themselves. Separating yourself from un unclean folks. You know them folks ain't saved. You know them folks ain't delivered. And we still hanging around them. And you folks is wondering why God ain't blessing them. Because they have not cleansed themselves. Y'all. God ain't going to take you over filthy. You're going over to a clean blessing with a dirty heart. And that's not that's going to happen. Y'all don't have to like me. I don't care. I'm going to show you through the word. You have to clean yourself up. God says sanctify yourself for tomorrow. For tomorrow the Lord will do one. But see your tomorrow of wonders never came because your day of uncleanness have not changed. <laughs> your tomorrow have not changed. Because the day you have not cleansed, you have not purified yourself, y'all. Look at, hold your spot. Let's go to this Bible class. I thought Second Cor Second Corinthians, chapter seven. This is what you're gonna have to do. When he says sanctify yourself, I'm gonna show you what you're gonna have to do. Second Corinthians. What do you mean, Pastor? Sweet for myself. All right. You got to do this before you go over. I think some of y'all still shaking up by that first part. <laughs> Second Corinthians verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Then when he said dearly beloved, he's talking to church folk. Let us, not God, let us cleanse ourselves. From all filthiness of the flesh. Watch this. And spirit. Wait a minute, pastor. What's the difference? Fleshly things you do is natural stuff. Natural sins. Y'all quiet. Natural sins like, again, you got a label saying now, having sex outside of marriage. Lying, cheating, stealing. Whoremongering. Cleanse yourself from that. And of the spirit, unclean thoughts. Ungodly emotions. Devilish affections. Y'all quiet over now. He said, cleanse yourself from that filthiness. Cleanse your mind from that filthiness. Perfecting. How you gonna do it, Pastor? Perfecting holiness. Wait a minute. What does perfecting holiness mean? Perfecting means maturing. Exercising yourself in holiness. 
exercising yourself in sanctification. In other words, every day you practice sanctification. You are perfecting holiness. Yeah. You know what in other words they're saying? You're working deliverance. You're perfecting. You're turning away from things that's not godly. You're turning away from stuff that's not holy. Yes, you're perfecting holiness. But how do I perfect holiness? In the fear of God. In other words, God is present. I'm aware you're here. I'm going to honor you by turning away from sin. That automatically puts you in a place of perfected holiness. I know God is here. I'm not going to say that. You perfected holiness. I know God is present. I ain't for to watch that. You perfected holiness. I know God is sitting right in his living room. I'm not for to watch that. Because if you're turning away from it, you're perfecting holiness. You're exercising. You're maturing in holiness. So when you mature in holiness, you are cleansing yourself. My God. God said, if some people need their spirits cleansed, do they repent? It, they still dirty. Though they say I'm sorry, they still dirty. Saying I'm sorry and repentant don't clean your spirit overnight. Yes, the blood washes your sin away, but it don't wash the dirt out your spirit. Notice what it said: cleanse yourself from the filth of the flesh and of the spirit. Notice the blood cleanse your spirit, but the blood didn't wash your spirit. No, I'm gonna reverse that. Notice the blood cleanse you from that sin, but it didn't wash that dirt out your spirit. You gonna have to wash it out. You've been in dirt for two or three weeks and two or three months, and you think one God forgive me, cleanse me, forgive me, it's gonna clean you out? No, it's gonna you have to wash. You got to wash. Let me tell you what repentance is. It's like you, you're dirty. You get in the shower and water just on you. It's just sprinkling water on you. But you're going to have to, you pick up the soap. You scrub yourself and get that dirt off you. You pick that word up. You spend time in prayer. You spend time in fasting and let God start cleansing you up. See, a lot of us getting sprinkled, but we ain't washing. He said we are clean through the word. You got to spend some manable time in the word. You got to spend a lot of time in prayer. Oh, y'all hear me to get that spirit clean. Let me tell you another another work of the filthiness of the spirit. Gossip and backbiting and, and being two-faced. And come on, somebody. Being opinionated. Judgmentalism. Those are spirits. I mean, I'm sorry. Those are uh, uncleanness in the spirit. No, he said cleanse yourself of the filth of the flesh and of the spirit. Being two-faced is filthiness in your spirit. Being a backbiter is filthiness in your spirit. Being, y'all got quiet. Being double-minded is a filthiness in your spirit. And God said, if you don't clean it out, I'm sorry, you're not going over. I can't get nobody. You're not going over to the promise with a dirty old spirit. I'm going to give you something clean and fresh. I'm going to let you pollute it with your spirit. God for let us pollute what he's going to give us with a dirty spirit. Better clean your spirit out. Come on, clean your spirit out. Clean out your spirit and your flesh. Because we don't commit adultery, we, we overlook the backbiting point. You, you, you overlook the bitterness and, and the unforgiveness. That's of the spirit. Unforgiveness of the thoughts. I mean, it's of the, it's, it's, um, filthiness of the spirit. Resentment is filthiness of the spirit. You can't be angry with leadership and expect to be blessed. You got a filthy spirit. Oh, don't have to light, if we gonna go over to and prepare ourselves for what he's gonna do, you gotta get your spirit clean, baby. You don't get it clean because you came one time through the prayer line. Your spirit's still dirty if you ain't been working. Can I get it? Can I get it with me? Yes, God has forgiven you, but you dirty, baby. Listen, that sin you done, watch this. The sin you done, God forgot about it, but he's seeing the stain he left. Oh. He's studying the sin that you done because he washed it away. But the stain is still there. That's what he's I'm still looking at is the stain. You got to clean it out. You got to work that out of you. Y'all don't have to like me tonight. Work them evil thoughts out of you. Anyway. And so, yeah, let me keep going because I tell you, I think I'm about to do part 14 on this one. <laughs> so, they, so if, if, if the saints refuse to consecrate and purify their spirits, you know what's going to happen? 
we will forfeit the wonders and the miracles that God is desiring to give us. You'll never get it. I'm going to show you scripture. You'll never get it. You'll never get to what God has for you if you don't prepare yourself now by cleaning out your spirit. Cleaning your flesh out. First lady, first lady, find me Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 23 down to 25. Minister Geisha, you find me Deuteronomy chapter 28, 23 down to 24. I want y'all to read, read this loud and slow. And I want y'all to listen. Because I'm trying to tell y'all. Uh, uh, what I say, Jeremiah 5, 23 down to 25. I'm trying to tell y'all, prepare yourself for what God's about to do. Listen, we're about to cross over. But we can't go dirty. Because you're going to hinder your blessing. Your mind ain't made up. You got it? 5 23 down to 25. But this people had revolting and a rebellious heart. Had revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolting and gone. Uh huh. Neither say they in their heart. They didn't even question. Go ahead. Let us now fear the Lord. Listen, they so rebellious, they never thought, wait a minute. You know, let me tell you something. We got to make sure we ain't super religious until we can't see our own faults. Until we can't say, God, look, I ain't where I'm supposed to be. Because, you know, we can be in a place where we don't think we're really bad. We can look at everybody else wrong and not really say ourselves and never consider, wait a minute, God, I, let, me, let me get me right. Because this is our, as a church, we got to get ourselves together and focus on, wait a minute, I've been so self-righteous. Y'all got quiet here now. Overlooking the bitterness in your heart. Overlooking the unforgiveness in your heart. Overlooking your lust in your heart. While you discern everybody else's spirit, you felt to discern yours. Y'all got quiet on me here. Everybody else a problem but you. Read that part again. Neither what? Neither say they in their heart. Wait a minute. Have you asked yourself the question, do I really fear God? Am I perfecting holiness in the fear of God? Go ahead, read it. In other words, wait a minute. Have we? This God that he gives the rain the former and the latter. Do I fear this God that causes the former and the latter rain to come? Go ahead. In his season. In. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all, that's the word. That's a season, Sister Linda. That's a season. And God said, I can't give you this season unless you have checked your heart. Get y'all this here. They never questioned whether they feared God. But God had a season for them. But God could not bring the season without them questioning themselves. Go ahead, read it. And reserve it uh -huh. unto, sorry, and reserve it unto us the appointed week of the harvest. That's an appointed time. Go ahead. Your iniquity. Your, your, no, 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 your good attitude. Wait a minute. They have dirt what? Watch this. What have it turned away? The latter and the former rain and the harvest. It turned away the harvest. Watch this. Your iniquities have turned away the season that's supposed to come in your life. This season should have been here a long time ago. That's a season you should and we should have been in a long time ago. Oh, y'all got quiet. But because iniquity abounded in the church, because iniquity abounded in people, he said, I couldn't bring the former and the latter rain. I couldn't bring the former and the latter harvest. He said, because of the iniquity have made them miss the season. It's some personal seasons we should have been in right now. But when you step back on God, God forgave you. But God said, but I'm crying not because I forgave you. I'm crying because I can't bless you. I, I had a season waiting for you. You had one more thank you, Jesus, but you backslid. You had one more time to jump and shout, but you backslid. You missed that season. Why? How did I miss it? Iniquity. And your sin. Now, 
Is that what it said? That's why Joshua says, sanctify yourself because your sin is going to withhold this good Jordan that I have for you. You got to sanctify your, oh, can I get a witness here? Get your house in order. Get your spirit right. Get your flesh in order so I can bring you that appointed season. Who knows that season you're supposed to have yesterday might come back again five years down the road. Who knows? It might be ten years down the road. Because you miss it through some iniquity. Isaiah 59. Before you go to Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. Watch this. I'm trying to get the. Lord y'all quiet. Oh y'all getting some out of this. This is why it's important to sanctify yourself. Because of what I'm reading. Isaiah 59 verse 1 down to 2. Behold the Lord hand. Behold the Lord hand is not what? In other words. It's not too short where he can't reach you. In other words, listen, if you ain't being blessed, it's, don't blame God's hand. Because his hand ain't too short. Go ahead. <laughs> if your prayers ain't being answered, it's not because it's too heavy that he can't. It's not because he dealt. Uh -huh. But your what? what? Iniquity. Have did what? Have Wait a minute. Go and what? And your God. See what sin will do? It put a wedge between you and God. And therefore, two things happen. When you have a separation between you and God, two things happen. You cut his hand and you stop his ears. Y'all didn't sit here what I just said. When you let sin separate you from God, two things happen. You cut his hand from reaching out to save you. And you stop his ears from hearing your prayers. Keep going. What else? It says, between you and your God, your sin has Notice, it didn't say he can't hear. It said he won't hear. Y'all quiet on me here. And so why did he say sanctify yourself? Because he you knows sin can't go over this next. Sin cannot go to this next season. And we got to do this as a whole. Don't you know one person can mess everything up? Y'all quiet on me here. But, but God said time out for that. I'm going to move some folks that's going to keep messing up for you. All right, come on, y'all quiet. All right, listen. Deuteronomy 28. And, uh, hold on, before you read that. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Y'all quiet. Hope y'all all right. All right. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna shout in a little bit, but I got I to gotta ground you up. First, read verse 15. Deuteron Deuteronomy 28. Read verse 15, and then 23 through 24. This Bible class. Yeah. Okay. 28, verse 15. Yeah. Okay. And then what's the next 23? Uh-huh. 24. Just three verses. But it shall come to pass. If, uh oh, if you won't obey His word. Wait a minute. What do it mean to observe? It means to look. That means to read His book, read this book, and find out what His will is. That's what you call observe. It means to seek Him. If you don't observe and read what He wants you to do, what's gonna happen? Which I command, not the pastor. Uh huh. What? You know what overtake me? You know what the word overtake me? It means to chase you down. Did y'all hear me? The word curse me, the word curse me, I gotta teach you a little bit, empowered to fail. Failure is gonna run you down. You wonder why nothing going right? Failure's upon you. Why is failure upon you? Because you ain't somewhere you ain't obeying God. You're not seeing provision supernaturally. Somewhere you are not obeying God. Go ahead and read the next verses I told you to. Okay, 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head <laughs> shall be grass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Look at that. That's yeah, that's is that it? The Lord shall make the rain of thy land power, and the, <laughs> the heaven. <laughs> You know what that's telling me? When you're not obeying God, because power is dry, you're going to always experience dry seasons. You'll never see moisture come from heaven. You'll never see God open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing because there's no water, there's, there's no obedience. And you're always wondering why I'm not experiencing the bless, the blessings of God. Why I'm not seeing God's hand moving my life. Because somewhere you are disobeying God and you're not sanctifying yourself. 
Can we just give God one big round of applause? Powder. Dust. Because when there's no rain coming out the sky, then no crops are growing. You have no ladder, no ladder rain, no former rain. You have no harvest. It's nothing. All your corn is dying. All your crops are dying. There's no water coming down. You wonder why everything's breaking down. Nothing's working right. Because God said, I'm not raining on it. I'm not raining my blessing on your house. I'm not raining my blessing on your finances. I'm not raining my blessing on my God and anything that pertains to you because you have not sanctified yourself to get ready for where we're going. Y'all hear me now. All right. Let's go back to Joshua real quick. So what's the second thing we got to do? What's the first thing? If we ain't ready to do these things, I'm sorry, baby. You need to hold me back. Y'all yeah, oh, help me. All right. All right. Y'all y'all ready for this next one? Y'all ready for this next one? Y'all ready for this next one? Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. This is Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. This is the third thing we got to do in preparing ourselves for where we're about to go is the leaders must be obedient to the instructions of God. Notice he told them, Joshua's told them to the priest, take up the ark of the covenant. Is that, that, is that not an instruction? And pass over before the people. Before you cross, before you go to Jordan, over the Jordan River, I need you to lead the way, priest. With the ark of the covenant. Oh, y'all hear me? I need you to be leaders up to the people. I need you to be one that leads such of a way they follow you. Oh, y'all, y'all quiet. Watch this. The pastor, so to speak, Joshua.